Hello, in this video I'll show you the common skin retouching mistakes and how you can easily go about them and avoid them when it comes to Photoshop. So in order to go through these mistakes, most of these mistakes come from the point when you're starting to use your frequency separation as a skin retouching technique. And I want to show you the most common mistake, that is mistake number one, that is using the wrong Gaussian blur radius for your images. Remember, Gaussian blur determines the amount of skin details you want to lose out or to keep in the image during the retouching process. So I'll just come to my actions right here and I play any frequency separation action. So I'll play the 8-bit action and hit the play button. So you can see it stops at the point whereby you have to input the amount of Gaussian blur you want to affect the image or the skin area. So in case you want to purchase my actions, you can as well check the link in the video description to purchase and support the channel by purchasing these actions. So the mistake that I'm talking about right now is using the wrong Gaussian blur radius. So I'm just going to use the Gaussian blur that is wrong first of all. So some people tend to use a very low Gaussian blur radius and I want to show you how this is going to affect the skin tone of the image. So I'm just going to use it around 2 and click OK. So you can see when you come and start retouching on the skin, so I'm just going to get the Mr. Brush tool and simply harden it set to zero, saying soft one brush is selected, clean brush is selected, and the second option that is selected, then wet 9, load 75, mix 90, flow 100%. Then I start brushing on the skin. So I'm just going to briefly start brushing on the forehead area like that. So I want to show you how using a very low Gaussian blur radius is going to be affecting the skin textures of your image. So I'm just going to paint like that on the skin, like that. You can see right now we are blending the skin area. But when you come and return on the textures, you can see the image looks a little bit too plastic. And we have lost out majority of the skin textures in the image. So that is how using a wrong or using a very low Gaussian blur radius is going to be affecting the image. So what do you have to do in this case? Just simply come and make sure you click on the action, you play the action. So when it comes at the point where you have to put in the Gaussian blur radius, simply take the radius slider all the way down and you click on that, on that area that seems to have more skin textures in the image. So at about this area, then click on the radius slider and move it forward. So click and drag it forward, just like that. So you have to stop at that point whereby you are just starting to close out on the skin textures or the skin details. So at about 7, that is when I'm just starting to close out on the skin details in this very image and click OK. So when you come and get the Mr. Brush tool and you start brushing on the skin, so I'm just going to brush quickly on the skin, you can see that the final textures are going to be better than the area or the step when we use a very low radius for the Gaussian blur. So when you come and turn on the texture layer, you can see before, after, before, after. We have retained the initial or original and natural skin details in the image. So for this case, always make sure to manually move the radius depending on the image that you're trying to work on and depending on the textures that you have in the skin. So that is mistake number one. So let's look at mistake number two right now. So mistake number two is some people, when it comes to using the Mr. Brush tool, they use the wrong settings for the Mr. Brush. So I'm just going to select this layer. So by wrong settings, I mean some people, after setting the hardness to zero, they come to this option and they leave it to clean, they leave it to load brush. So when you leave this to load brush and you start painting, you can see that it paints some annoying color all over the image. So make sure you always leave this to clean brush. When you leave this to load brush and you leave this one turned on or checked or selected in this case, and you try painting on the skin, you can see it paints this annoying color. So make sure you are very careful with this first step that is about setting this right. So make sure clean brush is selected and make sure this first option is not selected in this case. Make sure the second one is selected and this one is turned off or deselected. 
Then the other wrong settings some people tend to use when it comes to come to using frequency separation, they tend to leave sample alias turned on. So in case you are retouching with this texture layer visible, you are commanding the mixer brush tool to also copy textures from all these visible layers and paint them in the selected layer. So let me show you this. So when you start painting on the skin, you can see that the mixer brush tool is painting back textures in the selected layer, which is the low frequency layer or the color layer. It is because you have commanded the brush to sample information from all the layers in the frequency separation group. So make sure always leave this unchecked or turned off in this case. So when you try to brush on the skin, you can see it only deals with the colors and doesn't paint back textures in the color layer. So make sure you set up the mixer brush tool and the right settings for the mixer brush tool I would recommend is hardness set to zero, clean brush is selected and this second option that is clean brush after each stroke is selected. The weight is 9%, the load is 75%, the mix is 90% and the flow is 100% and make sure sample alias is not turned on or is not checked. So the other mistake some people may not take into consideration is coming and getting the brush tool or the clone stamp tool and they tend to forget to deactivate the caps lock on the keyboard. I hope you can see how the brush has turned into a cross icon. So in case the brush has turned into this cross icon, simply deactivate the caps lock on the keyboard. So press the caps lock on the keyboard so that the brush can display this circular format that is meant or that it is meant to be or to look like. So the caps lock on the keyboard is the one going to be affecting the brush tool from this cross to the default shape of the brush. So after understanding those simple mistakes and how we can correct them, then we are going to look at the people that tend to use the lasso tool technique to select on the skin. So when it comes to people that use the lasso tool, so this is the lasso tool I'm talking about. So when it comes to people that use the lasso tool to work on the skin, they tend to go wrong with this feathering area. So let me first of all show you this. So when I, I make a selection on the forehead area and I press Q on the keyboard, you can see the edges of my selection. You can see how smooth the edges are of the selection. Yeah? You can see I'm using a feather of 20 pixels and you can see how smooth the edges of the selection are in this case. And by the way, to deactivate the preview, simply press Q on the keyboard to deactivate the preview. So you can see that the edges are soft. So the higher feathering that you use for your lasso tool, it means the smoother the feathering is going to be. So the mistake most people tend to do, or most beginners, they tend to leave the feathering at zero pixels. So when you leave the feathering at zero pixels and you make a selection for example on the skin like this and you can see how sharp this is going to be or how sharp the selection is going to be the edges of the selection so what you have to do in these cases is when you use this kind of rough or sharp feather that is zero pixels it means it is going to be leaving this annoying line all over the edges of the selection which we don't want. So always make sure you use a radius of about 18 to 20 pixels. So just delete that and put in 20 pixels. So when I come and I make a selection once again, you can see that the edges are going to be very, very nice and smooth in this case. So that is how you can also go about that. Then we are going to go back to people that use the mixer brush tool to do the skin retouching process when it comes to Photoshop. So, in case you're always using the Mr. Brush tool, these are the don'ts that you have to take into consideration. So, whenever you're using the Mr. Brush tool, you don't have to zoom all the way in like this every time you're trying to edit or work on the skin. Don't zoom all the way in. So, oftentimes when I'm trying to 
teach people how to use the Mr. Brush tool, I always tell them to turn off the high frequency layer or the texture layer. The reason for doing this is because we want to see the uneven skin tone transitions in the image so that we can blend them better using the Mixer Brush tool. So always I recommend them to retouch at a distance because right now you can't see where to brush. And when we get the Mixer Brush tool and we try to brush on the given area, it is going to make us take a longer time trying to figure out or even edit a given image. So what I would always recommend is always retouch at a distance because at a distance you can see every single area that has an even skin color transitions in the image. Yeah, retouch at a distance. And in this way, you can see the uneven skin color transitions. And the other trick that you can use is whenever you're trying to use the Mr. Brush tool to blend the skin tone transitions in the image, always use a very small brush so that you can blend a given color in a given area. So for this bright area, you reduce on the size of the Mr. Brush tool by using the open square bracket key on the keyboard and simply brush over so to brush you basically click and hold down and you brush over a given area to blend it yeah and after blending that you can use a very small brush and blend where this color is mixing to a brand new color to blend that transition between the two colors so you have to keep on playing around with different sizes of the Mr. Brush tool in the image so that you can blend them quite well. But remember, we are brushing or using the Mr. Brush tool at a distance. So after we have addressed that, we're going to be looking at another mistake most people tend to do when it comes to using frequency separation. And that is the step for removing pimples and blemishes from the subject skin. So remember, Blemishes are usually part of the texture or the high frequency layer. So when we come to the high frequency layer and select it and we get our tool, for this I always recommend using the clone stamp tool. So always when you select the clone stamp tool and for example you zoom in and you want to start to remove the blemishes from the image or the pimples, for example this one, and after zooming in and you want to remove the blemishes, always make sure that you have set the, the clone stamp tool rather quite well. So always make sure you have set the clone stamp tool well. So always make sure for the settings, the hardness is zero. Make sure the mode, so oftentimes we tend to mess up with the mode of the clone stamp tool. Make sure it is always set to normal or past 100%, flow at 100%. Align this check and the sample is set to current layer because when you set this to current and blow, and you want to remove this pimple and by the way to remove pimples or blemishes from the skin we hold down the option key on the keyboard and we ensure that the size of the clone stamp tool is slightly bigger than the pimple or the blemish that we want to remove so to remove a pimple we usually hold down the option key on the keyboard and click on a clean area option for mac alternate for windows so option click on a clean area and simply release the option key on the keyboard and click over the pimple so you can see the mistake most people tend to have. So when it comes to, to removing the pimple, you can notice that the clone stamp tool has been able to remove the pimple, but it has painted color. Meaning you commanded the clone stamp tool to sample information from also the colors and paint them into the high frequency layer, which is the texture layer. That is why it is displaying or painting back colors into the high frequency layer or into the texture layer. So what you have to do, always make sure the sample is set to current layer because we are trying to remove blemishes which are part of the currently selected layer in our frequency separation group which is the high frequency layer. So hold down the option key on the keyboard and click on the clean area to sample clean skin. Release the option key on the keyboard and click once again. And you can see right now the clone sample tool won't paint back color on the pimple that we're trying to remove. So that is another mistake I had to address when it comes to removing pimples and blemishes. So after you have done the skin retouching, some people tend not to do eye or teeth whitening regarding the final touch-ups 
of their photos. So always remember, however much an image is, or however perfect you may have done the skin retouching, if you don't do a little bit of those final touch-ups, the photo won't look that nice. So the easy thing I would recommend whenever you're trying to do this, always don't come and use this photo filter option. So the mistake I tend to do most, or the mistake most beginners tend to do, is simply coming and using this cooling filter, 82 filter. So you can see when you use this kind of filter, it is going to make the teeth look blue or bluish in this case. So what I would recommend is simply, you can notice that when you zoom into the eyes, they have these random colors. We have blues, yellows, browns, and reds, even in the teeth area. So what I always recommend is simply desaturate these colors. Yeah, desaturate the colors and paint a desaturated look in the white area of the eye. And in that way, the brush is going to be eliminating all these unwanted colors in the white area of the eye. So I just come right here, adjustments, and simply come to hue and saturation. And what I'll do, I'll just come, measure master is selected, and take the saturation slider down like that. And you can see by just taking down the saturation slider, we are focusing on the eyes and the teeth. You can notice that the teeth and the eyes are now looking white. So what you have to do, with this white layer mask selected, simply come and press Ctrl I, or you can use Command I on the keyboard. So press Command I to invert this and simply come and get the brush tool and make sure for your settings, make sure soft round brush is selected. The mode is set to normal, opacity and flow at 100%. And after doing this, reduce on the size of the brush by using the square bracket keys on the keyboard, reduce on the size of the brush. And the other thing you have to do, ensure that you have black and white on these two color swatches. So in case you have any color that is not black and white uh, on the color swatches, simply click on the tiny squares or you can simply press, press D on the keyboard. So press D on the keyboard and make sure white is the top color. Remember in Photoshop, white is going to reveal and black is going to hide. Remember the whitening effect has been hidden behind the black mask. So in order to reveal it, we have to paint using a white brush in the area that we want so just paint on the white area and in that way the eyes are going to be whitened so just paint like that using the brush tool or the white brush in only the areas that we want so another mistake i see beginners do is they paint this area of the eye so remember this area is meant to be naturally orange, grayish, brown, or whatever color that is meant to be. So make sure you don't paint that area. And in case you make a mistake, use black to rub away or erase a mistake from a given area. So you can do the same for the teeth. White as the top color and paint on the teeth just like that. Paint on each individual tooth using the brush tool, but don't paint on to the gums just like that. And in this way, the teeth are also going to be whitened in this case. Remember, we just desaturated the image and inverted this using the layer mask and painted using a white brush to whiten the eyes and teeth. So in case the effect is too much, simply come to the opacity and reduce on the opacity to your taste or to your liking. You can say before, after, before, after. So I hope I've addressed majority of the issues when it comes to the mistakes most people tend to do when it comes to using frequency separation and mistakes done using the different tools for skin retouching in Photoshop. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in yet more videos on this channel. Don't forget to keep practicing and as well keep creating.